Today I'm talking to Steve Mason from CIT. Can you comment on the fuel price, how that's impacted your business? Yeah, so there's been a lot of volatility around fuel price these days for the airlines. Um, we speak to our airlines all the time about this. And the messages we get back from them is that they have to plan for you know, all this volatility in their business plan. So even though you know, fuel is at $49 a barrel for Brent today, you know, it's very difficult for them. And in fact, it's a fool's game planning your future business on that low fuel price. So when we think about CIT, we think about the, t the type of aircraft we have in order. It's new technology aircraft. We have a low average age. And these new technology aircraft, yes, they do burn less fuel, which is always good. But they do offer a lot of other benefits. And those benefits can be like additional seats on the A320neo, for example. Um, it can be uh, more range, such as the 787 and the A320neo 737 MAX. Um, and you know, this cabin and flight deck technology that allows the airline to do things that they wouldn't necessarily be able to do from a, from a navigation point of view and from a passenger point of view. So all these things combined, I think, um, um, show a clear runway ahead for new technology aircraft, um, even with fuel, where it is, fuel price being where it is today. Mm -hmm. um, airlines have talked yesterday a lot about flexibility. Can you tell me how does that impact your way of thinking? So I think we provide flexibility to the airline. So, you know, we have uh, on average a lease term for narrow body aircraft seven or eight years, for wide body aircraft a little bit longer. Um, and those natural um, um, uh, uh, periods for those leases allow the airlines, once you stack those leases on top of each other over time, it allows you to exit a certain aircraft at a certain time. So this flexibility is different to owning the aircraft for the airline. So if they own the aircraft, you're in a down cycle, the aircraft may be sitting on your books for, for more than you can get for the market, you're stuck with the aircraft. But if you have a, a portion of your fleet that is leased, these natural um, um, lease periods allow you to you know, move around your fleet, get new technology aircraft, get used aircraft, um, just you know, depending on what environment you're in, you can match your your fleet more easily with with a with a uh, with a with a uh, partial leased fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, can you comment on the Boeing uh, middle of the market aircraft that is in the study right now? So. Uh, you know, whether it's a Boeing aircraft or an Airbus aircraft you know, remains to be seen. I think there's an interesting space um, between today's narrow body and today's wide body. I think there is a market for it. Um, I think it's more you know, in the thousands of aircraft rather than hundreds of aircraft. Um, if you think about the wide body aircraft today, A33200, 787-8s, which are you know, 767s, which are the closest to this middle of the market um, area, um, a lot of those aircraft are, are you know, very capable long-range aircraft that are operating on you know, average sector lengths that are quite short. So I think that's an interesting space to go after for this middle of the market aircraft where you, know, you have four and a half, five thousand nautical mile range aircraft instead of a seven thousand nautical mile or eight thousand nautical mile uh, range aircraft where you don't have to carry around that additional structure um, and therefore have a you know, higher trip cost on the aircraft. And so, so that's one angle that this market can go after. The other, the other angle is, is the high end of the narrow body market. So the A321, 737-9 um, aircraft are going to you know, show very good seat mark costs. So I think it's very important for this middle of the market aircraft to be able to um, be delivered into the marketplace with excellent seat mark costs, but also at the right price. Because at the end of the day, your direct operating costs, so your cash operating costs, including you know, your capital cost or your lease charges, is ultimately what the airlines pay. And so you know, if the airframer can get the aircraft to that right price to show a competitive advantage against the A321neo or the 737-9, then the market's you know, bigger for this aircraft. Um, and if I was them, that's what I would, that's what I would try and, uh, try and you know, set the sweet spot for the aircraft on. Uh, could you share some thoughts on the C-Series? Yeah, so we look at all of the uh, aircraft that are in the marketplace. The C-Series, you know, from an aircraft and metal perspective, it looks very good on paper. Uh, we like where the weight is, uh, we like where the performance of the aircraft is, the range, the seat models, it's very good. Um, I think the competition to the, the CS300 today is coming from used A319s, used 737-700s. Um, and th I think that is competition, it really is competition because you're, 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 you're kind of uh, balancing capital cost of the aircraft versus the efficiency improvements in the C-Series. 
Um, Airbus and Boeing are not selling many A319neos at 737 7 MAX aircraft. Um, I do believe the aircraft will still be manufactured. Um, so ultimately, this market I, you know, needs to be filled with some sort of aircraft, and I think that creates an opportunity uh, for the C series. I think you know, within that market, I think it's a very well designed. Uh, product and I think I think eventually once they get the aircraft produced into service and operating, it's going it's it's going to uh, prove itself to the airlines and I think after that you'll see orders come in. Thank you very much. Steve. Thank you.